this inviting establishment is the Texas State Penitentiary. Got all the conveniences. Free room, free board. And a chance to learn a trade. Most of these convicts are guilty as charged, but some of them aren't. Just the same once you enter these walls, it doesn't make any difference. Sooner or later, you're not here for hanging. You serve your time. And when you get out, you take up some productive occupation. Sometimes you climb straight up the ladder of success. Sometimes you don't. When a man comes out of prison, he's usually developed a personal philosophy. For some, it's revenge and hate. I have a philosophy, too. Peace. My name's Destry. I spent time in Texas State Penitentiary. As it happens, I was framed. And since my release, I've been trying to find the man who framed me. fellow boarders in Texas aren't philosophers of peace, however. And I kind of hate to run up against my old friends because I usually get into trouble. Take what happened with Johnny Washburn, for instance. Fine man. A real accomplished gunman. But he was just too anxious to get even.
you must have got your stuff at the same place. I'm looking for a man. You won't find him here. Yes, sir, I know that. Everybody's at the courthouse, the trial. Well, if you're going to have a trial, I guess that's the place for it. A fellow named Charlie Bent. That's not him. The fellow's name is Johnny Washburn. Held up a mining office. Killed a man. I mean the fellow I'm looking for. You say they're trying Johnny Washburn? Old bloody killer, that boy. Spent most of his life in prison. Yeah. I know. Johnny Washburn sent for you, huh? No, nothing like that, Sheriff. First I heard of it was from the bartender of the Rainbow Saloon. But Johnny's a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. well, I would say that you've got some very funny friends. Well, I have some funny enemies. Well, let's see if Johnny wants to see you. After all, a condemned man is entitled to a few privileges. And, uh, I'll take the gun. You know this fellow? Ask him. It's all right, Johnny. Thank you, Deputy. Well, Destry, what are you doing in a broken downtown like this? Guess I don't have to ask you that question. Yeah, forget it. I always said I was going to get even. Oh, yeah. Looks like you got yourself so even's going to kill you. Well, what difference does it make where they're going to hang me? Come on, sit down. Let's have a talk. Hey, Deputy. I want this to be a private talk. Now, would you mind telling that friend of yours to take his ear out of my cell? You have some kind of an idea that we're running a hotel here? All right, old timer. Come on, leave him alone. Let him talk. I might get some information. You know, the gold. The sheriff and I are just going to have to manage without you. Well, Destiny, it's sure good to see you again. Hey, did you ever find that Charlie Bent? Well, as a matter of fact, that's one of the reasons I asked to visit you, Johnny. Oh, I know it's a long shot, but well, I thought maybe, you know, while you were out, you might have run across some word about him. No, 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 I haven't. You could, uh, you could say that I've been a mite too busy lately to pick up any gossip. Yes, yeah, so I heard. It looks like the whole country wants to know what I did with that gold. It was over the mining company. That we robbed you. You heard about that. And I don't have to tell you why I picked on the door. No, I haven't forgotten. Yeah, that's it would be a clean mouth. And it was our luck we ran into a posse. Now they killed two of my pals. Leaving nobody to know where that loose hid. Except me. And I ain't talking. A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand desperate. Laying out there just doing no good for nobody. I'd rather that than the mining company get it back. Mining company. Is it true what I just heard? What you hear? The fellow at my barber shop said Washburn asked to see some stranger that just got in town. Yeah, he's still in there. A hundred thousand in gold. Washburn ain't gonna hang without telling somebody where that is. You know something? In my whole life, I never had one real friend. Except you. Didn't know that, Johnny. I I knew we broke a lot of rocks together. No, that's no. You 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 talked to me. You talked to me and you listened to me. Nobody else ever did that. So I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to make you rich. Oh, now wait a minute. No, you don't, Johnny. Put me back in the losers club. Well, we're trying to do you a favor. You can. You can. Just don't tell me where that stuff is. Look, it's bad enough I've come here already. When I leave this place, it's going to be half this town following me, thinking I'm going straight to that bullion. 
Well, you can wait until, until things simmer down a little. Hundred thousand dollars ain't ever gonna simmer down. I could wait ten years now. I'd go that stuff, I'd still be somebody on my trail. What do you think I'm gonna let that gold stay out there and stay hid? I waited twenty years to get even with that company. Now somebody's gotta get some good on it. Well, how about you? Me? They're gonna hang me. Now you know that as well as I do. Maybe not. You tell that judge where that stuff is, and maybe you get life sentence instead of hanging. You're missing the whole point. Now look, they don't hate me in this state, they send me back to Texas. I kill the warden and the guard breaking out of there. Now one place or another, they're gonna string me up. Now I right, forget it. I thought you was a friend of mine. Johnny, it just wouldn't be friendly to tell me where that stuff is. Don't you understand? Have it your own way. Just as long as I know that mining company ain't ever going to see a hide in the tail of that bullion, I'll be satisfied. Would you stay for the hanging? Well, a uh, fellow likes to have a pal around when he's going to die. A friend. I'll be here. Thanks. So long, Johnny. Oh, uh, that's the, uh, where are you staying in case I want to talk to you again? Maybe on my feet. Every bed in this town is taken. I think they're even renting the pool tables at night. Well, there's this girl I know. Maybe she can help you. How'd you meet a girl? You've been in jail for 20 years. Ah, uh, you forget I've been loose for a month. Now, her name is Patience Daly, and she sings over at the Rainbow Saloon. Patience Daly. I'll give it a try. Good luck, Johnny. Good luck. I never heard of that. Destry, our best is none too yeah, good. I know, I know. Oh, no, Mr. Destry. Your money's no good here. Now, look, I'll tell you, every one of you once and for all, he didn't tell me where he hid that loot. <laughs> How's chances of getting something to eat here? Oh, sure, Mr. Destry. Just take one of them tables and tell that pretty waitress what you want. And remember, your money's no good here. I wish I was Lazy. Right over there. A little sparrow. You, um, and I take your eyes off Destry. And I take your eyes off him once. That's right, sir. Yeah. Destry's over there. Yeah, that's right, Sheriff. All right. Just want to tell you I was going home. Sleep well, Sheriff. I'm on the job. Mr. Destry, I presume? About the gold stolen from the Overland Mining Company. I don't know anything about it. You know, that's very funny. Next thing you're going to tell me is you don't know a guy by the name of Washburn. Yeah, I know. I yeah, sure you did. Texas State Penitentiary. He served six years for robbery. Oh, don't tell me anymore. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's a frame up, naturally. Naturally. Only it happens to be true. You know, it's one thing about Washburn. He never tried to weasel out of his guilt. Weaseling takes a different kind of talent. You know, Destry, I hate guys like Washburn. I have to get back all the goods that they stole. In this particular case, the Overland Mining Company's paying me to get back their gold. It's a nice company you're working for. They still use bull whips on 12-year-old boys? Bull whips? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about a kid named Freddy. He was Johnny Washburn's kid brother. You see, they used to work for the Overland Company. But one day, Freddy took sick on the job. Only the foreman wouldn't believe him. 
Hit him twice before Johnny was able to pull him off. With a pickaxe. You want to know something? You're breaking my heart. Go away. Look, my job is to get back everything that was stolen from the Overland Mining Company. Now, your job as a law-abiding citizen, and I use the term loosely, is to tell me exactly where Washburn hit the gold. Well, that makes seven. Seven what? Seven times I've been told I know where that stuff is since I left Johnny Washburn's cell. Ah, oh, come on. Washburn sent for you. He's got to tell you where the gold is. Now, look, mister. You listen to me, and you listen good. Johnny Washburn did not send for me. My being in this town is pure coincidence. And I'll tell you something else. He tried to tell me where that stuff is. Only I just wouldn't let him. You know, come you're a liar. Now, the day you lay your hands on that gold is the day I'm going to put you back in jail. If you're alive. Miss Daly? Line. Don't be stingy. Stingy means a miser, a skinflint, a tight wad, and a penny pincher. Seems to cover it pretty well. How's that? Don't you think the sign's a little bit too uh, blunt? Blunt? I mean, wouldn't it be better to say something like uh, your generous contribution would be greatly appreciated? No, I tried that in the last time. It didn't work. No one knew what it meant. Three dollars and thirty-eight cents. I have to sing you three songs tonight. Well, maybe to pick up later. Oh, Miss Daly. I wonder if you'd know where I could rent a place to sleep for the night. What do you think I am, a hotel clerk? Well, Johnny Washburn said you might be able to help me out. Johnny Washburn? He's the one I'm going to hang. Oh. Oh. Well, you must be, uh, you must be Destry. One the whole town is talking about. Come with me. Won't you come in? Thank you. One, two, three, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Three dollars and forty-two cents. That's twelve cents more than I thought I had. Maybe my contribution threw you off. That's right. Turn your back, please. Do what? Turn your back. Face the wall. Now, when a lady asks a fellow to turn his back, it usually means that... That she doesn't want him to see what she's doing. Okay. When I was a little girl, I lived with my aunt and uncle in a sod house in Canada. I was six years old when I found out how important money was. I didn't find that out until I was ten. I thought it was one of them that slow. But anyway, I saved every penny I could get my hands on. I put it in a clay pit my uncle made for me. Saved and saved. Seemed like years. But my aunt and uncle were so poor, they finally had to take my clay pit. I stood there and screamed when they broke it open. I'll never forget. Oh, how they scrambled on that dirt floor to find the pennies that rolled out. Came to 27 cents. You can turn around now. What was all that about? I was putting my money away. Don't you believe in banks? I certainly do. For cashing checks, changing coins into bills, and loaning money on safe business ventures. But not for saving? Not for my savings. <laughs> now, pay for you to stay. You can use this couch. The charge will be a dollar a night. Dollar a night? Well, the hotel's only six bits. Why aren't you at the hotel? I'll take the couch. You can hang your clothes any way you want. I'll get you some soap and a towel. The soap's a nickel, the towel's a dime. You can use a washstand in the bedroom. After I'm up and dressed. Have to fetch your own water, and you'll have to pay in advance. Oh, I never realized how business-like uh, an artist could be. Here is three dollars. Pay in advance. Now, I don't know how long I'll be staying, but uh, I imagine when that's used up, you let me know. You can be sure of it. You mind? <sighs> Say, how'd you meet Johnny? Did he tell you? Uh -uh. All he said was, uh, you're a sweet kid. 
He's a sweet kid, too. Now, he did tell you where the gold is, didn't he? No. I wouldn't let him. Why? Common sense, that's why. But patience, you can't spend gold bars. And peddling them to some crook at a discount, it's not only dangerous, it just ain't practical. Believe me. If you tell me where it is, I... Patience, I gotta talk to you. If it's about Mr. Destry, don't bother. He's staying here. I've rented in the sitting room. You've rented And it? there's a lock on my bedroom door. Besides, what right have well, you... Well, I got plenty of right. You know how I feel about you. Why else do you think I've been telling you about that ranch? This is half the time to discuss You're my... the one that brought it up, not me. Honey, I keep telling you if I can talk the sheriff into a raise, the bank will loan me a down payment. Must you make me feel so selfish? I want more out of life than a broken down ranch. What's wrong with the rent? It isn't broken down. It just needs a little fixing up. Rafe, we've been through this before. Now, if you'll excuse... The reason I come here, that killer watchman sent you a message. Me? His last request, he wants you to sing a song for him in his cell. How can I refuse? Patience, Johnny tries to tell you where that gold is. Sing loud. Real loud. about to go fishing in the dry stream. Parade starts the minute I get on my horse and ride out of town. Can't you leave without being seen? <laughs> on this prairie? Well, if I crawled on my belly at night, I'd still be the highest landmark in miles. You understand, of course. If you ever leave town, you'll be leading a pretty good parade yourself. I know. Ever since I sang for Johnny, people are convinced he told me about the gold. Well, that's no problem. You just stay, let everybody know you haven't got the foggiest notion where that stuff is. You'll be all right. That's just it. I do know. Johnny told me. You didn't sing loud enough, Patience. <laughs> Johnny said you were the one person in town I could trust. Did he tell you I don't want anything to do with that stuff? Tell you why? Yes. Then you know why I can't help you. I... 
I, I can't get it by myself. That gold weighs 400 pounds. You could always take a wheelbarrow. Would you? Would you please be serious? I need you. Uh-uh, not me. And I can't be serious. Patience. Picture of you and me leading that parade. Well, so long. And thanks for adding me the room. Destry, you'll be back. A hundred thousand dollars is no laughing matter. Then why am I laughing? Come on. that interests me. That's it out. Now look, the old and mining companies authorized me to give 10% of everything that was stolen. That's $10,000. Are you interested? Waitress, another plate of spaghetti for my friend, Mr. Oakley. I'm beginning to think that's fine of you. Just where do you think you're going? I think I'm going to see Miss Patience daily. You're going to stop messing around with Patience. I'm going to marry that girl. Now look, Rafe, I like you. As far as I know, you're about the only honest man I met in this town, except maybe Johnny Washburn. So I'll level with you. I have no romantic intentions on Miss Patience daily. You better not. If you cause her any trouble, I'll hunt you down. Line forms on the right, old buddy. I know where you've been. You've been to see Mr. Oakley. Oakley? He told me through all about the reward. 10% of 100,000. Kind of adds up, doesn't it? I don't know what you're talking about. You mean he didn't tell you? I gotta admit, I mean, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. $10,000 is really worth going after. It's not enough. I want it all, the whole 100,000. Well, the way it's got to be, okay. I'll help you. You will? Yep. I don't trust you. But unfortunately, I don't trust anybody else either, except Ray. <laughs> but he's honest. I've been sitting here all afternoon trying to think of how to get out of here without being followed. Well, now, if I can show you how to get us out of this town without being followed, do we split 50-50? If you can get us out of this town, yes. It's a deal. <laughs> Stupid. Five minutes after we leave this town, a posse will be following us at a nice, safe distance. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And why are we doing it? Patience, patience. Hold out, folks. Get aboard. Let's go. Well, unless I miss my guess. Oakley be joining us in just about three seconds. Well, this is a coincidence. Yeah, sure is a coincidence. All gone in the same direction. Better get the shower.
Swing station. They rest the horses for a few minutes. I think, uh, I think I'll get out and stretch. Stop till they get to the next town. By the time the posse gets there, finds we're not on that stage, backtracks to this spot, we'll be long gone. It's Oakley I'm worried about. He may not be that easy to fool. Come on. Share of them two for forty-five dollars a piece. Forty-five bucks, pretty steep, isn't it? Tell you what I'll do. I'll throw in a couple of saddles and bridles. You ain't got much choice, have you? Considering the next ranch is eighteen miles north, I'd say I'm being downright generous. I'll I'll pay for yours. You pay for mine. California. Yeah, she's my sister, and uh, we lost our wagon crossing the stream. Here you are. Can't trust my uncle with my money. He's such a spendthrift. Uncle, huh? Saddle the horses while I change. <laughs> Oh, 
Even she knows. Yeah, you keep this up, and you're going to ruin everything. Use your head, Oakley. That girl thinks you're trailing, and she won't go within 10 miles of that loot. So why don't you go on back to town and let me handle it? When she shows me where it is, I'll get word to you. You think I'm crazy enough to trust the next con with $100,000? Just point your nose in the direction you came from and start riding, huh? All right, Destry, but remember this. If you double-cross me, I'll never quit till I find you again. <laughs> Sixty miles. You got any idea we're trying to pick up his trail would amount to? But, Sheriff, all that gold. It ain't our money. Let the mining company worry about it. Sheriff, I'm taking some time off. For what? You're not going back looking for that gold. My girl's out there someplace, and I aim to find her. Rafe, you find her, you'll find Destry. You know that, don't you? I'm going to be mighty disappointed if I don't. <laughs> Money or leave it alone. I'll take it. Mm, I know. I suppose you don't think money's important. I'd be the last person in the world to say that. Well, you shouldn't make handcuffs of it the way you have. We're talking about handcuffs. Do you want to know what I want money for? Mm, I already know. So you can keep it hidden in a dark cellar. Go down at night with a candle and count it. <laughs> no. I'm going to buy a saloon right in the heart of San Francisco. Saloon? I've been watching Mr. McGregor. He runs the Rainbow Saloon, where I sing. He averages $850 a week. If he can do that in a one-horse town, I can make a million in San Francisco. That you didn't have to tell me. Sleep. You can't sleep. So you wake me up. That's nice. Well, don't be such an old grouch. Don't you want to know why I can't sleep? No. But I suppose you're going to tell me anyway. I keep thinking about all that gold. Do you know, Destry, in a very short while, we're going to be very rich. Very, very rich. We're on our way to prison. That is stolen gold, Patience. Do you have any idea what it's like to be behind bars? Well, you sound as if you've been there, behind bars. A couple of years. Had hard labor. What had you done? Nothing. Fella framed me for kind of stealing his girl. Stole $900 from the man I was working for and put it under my mattress. Fellow named Charlie Bent. Ever seen him? No. Not that I can remember. But it's a kind of a face it would be easy to forget. What you gonna do about him? 
bent on two people. Bent and me. Now, anybody that puts an innocent man into jail deserves to die. <sighs> Not before he straightens out the record for me. And then what? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, there's a lot of country this side of the Mississippi I haven't seen yet, and I'm kind of enjoying looking at it. With half that gold, you can do it in style. Patience. I've been using you. I mean, to lead me to that gold. If I knew where it was, we could turn it in and collect the reward. I thought so. After all this time. Well, now, Patience, wait a minute. No, I'm leaving. Oh. Right this minute, alone. There's a way to do this. Only one way to do this. We turn in the gold and we collect the reward. I want it all. That does it. That does it. What are you doing? I'm getting out of here. You can have it all. Every bit of it. 100%. But you can't leave me out here alone. I might die. <clears throat> but you'll die rich. All right. All right. You can have 40, I'll take 60. Well, you can have 60, I'll take 40. Death tree. All right, you win. We'll turn in the money and take the reward. 5,000 for you, and 5,000 for me, right? Only five for me? Only five. All right. But after we find a girl, we'll ride back into town and tell them where it is. Now you're satisfied? Yep, I'm satisfied. Now, I suppose that makes us partners, Mr. Destry. Don't you have a first name? Nope, just two last names. Harrison, Destry. Harrison? That's my mother's name. Oh. What was her first name? Harrison. <laughs> to know I got $100,000 in stolen money on me. So it's like that, is it, Oakley? Boy, you really fooled me. I knew you were stupid. But I didn't think you were stupid enough to turn crooked. You... You're stealing it? I always promised myself the chance if the opportunity came along. And here's a $100,000 opportunity. Now, oh, don't reach for that gun. All right, start loading the gold. Come on, move. So they had about 200 pounds on each horse. I have no trouble getting to Mexico. They'll get you. No, they won't. I've chased so many crooks in my time and become a pretty good one myself. You're a thief, a double crosser, and a dirty liar. Save your breath, Patience. Uh, you can't leave us out here with no water or horses. In this particular case, I'm going to. Please, we'll die here. When you gamble big, you got to figure to lose big. Well, all right, then. Why don't you go ahead and shoot us? Easy, Patience. Well, if I do that and they find bullets, they need to be after me for murder. I don't want that. <laughs> Thank 
Hey, Mr. Oakley. When you're dealing with people like Oakley and patients, pays to take precautions. I knew before we ever rode into that desert that I'd hate to be stranded there. Well, that'll be 20 bucks. Wear and tear on that mule. And worth every saddle sore of it. Sure. Destry. <coughs> Destry. He lost $100,000. Yeah. Triple for life. Destry, I wish I'd never laid eyes on you. Well, you just let me get my horse. And you never will again. I promise you. I'd feel like you know what you did with them two horses I told you. That's a long story, mister. I'm just glad you did what I told you and came after us. like you missed all the fun. Oh, no, Sheriff. Not all of it. Not all of it. What happened? Well, uh, that's as plain as a nose on your face. Rafe went out, chased that crook Oakley down, killed him and brought him back the gold. How did that come about? Because I know how to pick smart deputies, that's how. Destry! I sure want to thank you for everything you did. I wish somebody would start talking American around here. Well, when you outfoxed the posse, it gave up, but not me. I swore I was going to find patience and shoot you dead. You know, for a while there, old buddy, I would have welcomed it. Well, I know most of the trails to Mexico. I figured you'd head that way as soon as you got your hands on the money. So I'd cut you off and rescue patients. Only I didn't run into you or run into Mr. Oakley. And I said, howdy, Mr. Oakley, and he took a shot at me. No. Fact. So I shot back, killed him dead. Then I seen what was in them saddlebags. And you put two and two together. Rafe's gonna get the reward money too, Destry. All ten thousand dollars of it. Oh, I just bet he does. And, and we're, we're gonna, gonna get, get married. married. How'd you know that, Destry? Oh, I just guess good. Well, good luck, you two. Come on, honey, let's go put some money on that ranch. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 